A choice right now, right now. Between fear and love. It's just a run. Out of the dark night of ignorance and into the shining light of truth. Expounding reality. A population of citizens capable of critical thinking. We don't see things as they are, we see them as we are. There's a, a level of reality where everything dissolves into a, an ocean of energy. We empower our experience by insisting on our authenticity. That's very profound. Very profound. Expanding reality. Welcome to Expanding Reality Podcast. I am your host, Brandon Thomas. On this episode, guys, we got to bring back Christopher, the Astro Medium. All the ways to find him will, of course, be linked in the show notes. He had such a great time last time that I was like, dude, we've got to bring you back on and uh, just find out what's going on. We talk human resonance. We talk uh, human design. Uh, the dude is incredible. You guys will love him. You, We got a lot of feedback uh, from his last episode, and you can't get enough of the guy. So here he is, Christopher, the Astro Medium. Ladies and gentlemen, very, very excited to welcome back Christopher, the Astro Medium. How are you, dude? I'm doing very well. How are you doing? Man, every day above ground is a great day. I'm having a blast. I was telling the very wife earlier, good. I'm very excited about this episode. I can just relax. We can talk. I know it's going to be amazing. And I've just been really looking forward to getting you back on, man. So what have you been doing since we last talked to you? Well, I have made some major changes in the structure of my business. I've been um, teaching more and I'm now on vacation. So I'm going to be taking a three week hiatus away from social media and content creation and readings and teaching and all of that to just relax and self care and give back to myself. Yeah. Hell yeah. Well, that sounds amazing, man. And you deserve it. You work your ass off. And of course, your Instagram, I will be linking as always in the show notes. You're a returning champ, man. You, uh, you've already been on and we had a wonderful conversation. And I've really, like I said at the beginning, really been looking forward to talk to you again. So uh, vacation. And so for three weeks, what do you, what do you have planned uh, for the rest of the year here? Uh, for the rest of the year? Yeah. What are your like year goals for this year? You're going to cap um, it off solstice, yes. winter solstice with what? Um, well, I will be having taught six new classes, um, psychic development, astrology, psychic astrology, um, um, empaths anonymous. There's a whole bunch of new stuff, um, coming everyone's way. And, um, I, I do, I may not be in Atlanta by the end of the year. We'll see. Okay. Uh, anything you want to share? Any prospects? Um, Let's just say California sounds uh, good. <laughs> okay. We're going to narrow it down. All right. That'll work. Uh, well, cool. You just go wherever the hell you want. Just at some point, if you're passing through, come by Texas and hang out with me for a little bit. Oh, I plan to for sure. Okay, cool. Yes. Well, uh, nice. since we've done the introductions and since you've already been on and my audience is very excited to have you back on, I haven't told anybody yet, but I have gotten a lot of comments on your episode in particular. People really enjoyed it and you're wonderful. So I think you gained a few new fans Thank there because people tell me how great that episode was and I agree with them. And that was early in the game and I've come a little bit since then. So I'm really excited, like I said, to do this. So um, with with everything going on right now, I know that we are having the, which eclipse is it, solar? It, yes. Um, two days ago, it was the new moon in Gemini solar eclipse, total solar eclipse. Okay. So break that off for us. What, did, what the hell does that mean? Well, so um, lunar eclipses always happen on a full moon and total eclipses or uh, solar eclipses happen on a new moon. It's a conjunction of the sun and the moon. And um, this also um, is a conjunction of the sun, the moon and the earth. So it's an even stronger moon. It's an, a stronger alignment. And in astrology, eclipses have been looked at for thousands of years as omens of something bad happening, but that's not at all what it is now that our consciousness has, as our reality expands, our view of these cosmic events expands as well. And so these are portals, if you will, not stargates, but portals that offer a stronger vibrational wave pattern that can be conducive to 
planting seeds, creating change, sudden and abrupt new directions coming in. There's a lot of um, ascension symptoms, light codes, upgrades that come in with eclipses as well. And really it comes down to physics and quantum physics is, um, you know, planets can align, you know, two, two planets can be in the same point in the zodiac and be here, but then they can also be there. And that's what's happening when you're experiencing Kazemis and eclipses is total alignments. So is this the first one of this year? So is that what makes no, sense? This is the, so this is the first eclipse season, we can say. But the first eclipse was on May 26th when we had the full moon in Sagittarius, which was a total lunar eclipse. Lunar eclipse. But this is the first yes. solar eclipse of the year. Yes, because okay. yes. Okay, gotcha. Well, awesome, man. I am fascinated by all of this stuff, of course. Um, so I also wanted to ask you about Ascension, but um, I had a couple of things that I wanted to get to before that. Uh, so with with the uh, the hell is that thing called? I spaced on it, and I'm going to totally cut all this shit out. But um, that's Mercury retrograde. You know what it is? Yeah, it's no, you me. shouldn't cut it out. It's everyone's spacing out right now. Mercury retrograde is occurring in the sign of Gemini, and that's the sign that Mercury rules. It's also the sign that my Mercury is in, so which is meaningful. So um, it creates an even wilder Mercury retrograde experience, and this happened during eclipse season. So it's definitely been a ride. Yes. Okay. And yes, you're right. Um, it took me like four times to send you this uh, invite for this show. I was like, hang on, I'm trying to send it. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying, I'm Mercury trying to close everything bullshit. out. And I try not to blame everything on Mercury retrograde, but there are definitely, um, you know, I don't want to fulfill a self prophecy, but there are definitely occurrences that have happened and you want to pay attention to retrogrades and eclipses because they connect to previous retrogrades. And um, you could say that this eclipse connects to the eclipses of last year, but also all the way back to um, late 2011. So eclipses carry stronger, like I said, uh, wavelength patterns and their energy can set something into motion that comes to fruition or levels up in the next connected eclipse. So there are smaller cycles and then there are larger cycles and they're all connecting. Time isn't linear, so there is a um, a revisiting of these themes. I, I remember now what I was going to ask you. So let's say that you are, we're now an interstellar society and that we travel from this planet to another galaxy completely. Uh, from that vantage point, things would look completely different in the night sky. So would there then therefore be a different set of rules of astrology? Like, would it work that way? Um, so I'm hearing no. Um, no, because if we were to base it off of the constellations, the way that the Vedic astrologers do, you would say yes, because then we would be in a different position. Um, and yes, there would be certain differences, but you were born here and you're made here and you're of the third dimensional plane of Earth. We are the keepers of the third dimension here on Earth. So we would still, even in another place, there may be different changes that affect us, but we are still bound to this earth plane okay that makes if sense. we were to stay within this dimension yeah. which we'd have to unless we left our body and then you're not bound to these um planetary shifts in the same way now have you been hearing anything about a galactic war or anything like that because i've i've heard a little bit about this idea uh and you're rolling your eyes already uh, and i've heard that you know then they'll they'll say because of all the turmoil and stuff going on right now don't do any astral travel, like don't, um, you know, do like heavy uh, hallucinogens and stuff like that. They can separate you literally from your consciousness and all that. I, so is there anything to that? I think so. Um, just like there's, there are universes out there that are imploding on itself. And there are um, parallel versions of Earth, which don't have any humans on it. And there are, it just... If people are pulling in that energy, um, that doesn't mean that you will. Okay. I was just and curious. These galactic wars and all of this kind of stuff. It's, um, you know, there are wars happening on this planet too, but where are we going to give our attention? And I don't mean to be so snobby about it, but I just, it gets real Star Trek and it gets real 
Um, it's like romanticized. It can be infanticized and not that it isn't true. I'm sure there are, there are galaxies trying to, or black holes trying to swallow galaxies. I could call that a war if I wanted to. That's fair. Yeah. Okay. And again, um, I don't mean to be so, no. um, <laughs> You are. Submit, <laughs> what's the word? Mercury retro, Mercury retrograde. Um, Mercury. But I don't mean to be so invalidating to that point, but I don't. I don't worry about war on this planet. You know, and this is an interesting concept as well. I kind of wanted to bring up with you. So, whenever you see things like the rollout of the V or the jab or whatever we want to talk about it, do you think that they're ever going to go to mandatory where everybody has to do this thing or passports or anything like that? Or do you think that, you know, the point is not to carry out the act, the point is to create fear through the threatening of the act? Do you think that there's anything to that and that nothing really manifests most of the time? Well, see, that is actually um, the way I just got it was that there is something to it and that there um, there are people who want it to be uh, mandatory. And um, <sighs> there are several sectors of government that are that don't even include the actual people who are in c control bringing about a lot of this news. Um, so I see like you could say the elite or the people who are actually control in control up here. And then there's several different, um, branches of our government. No, of different peoples of maybe different countries, governments, um, having different opinions about this and, um, wanting to implement it in a certain way. And then there's, there are certain scientists that are, sorry. There are scientists, um, okay, they keep saying like stuff like herd immunity, and I've heard stuff like that. There are scientists who are um, trying to tell people not, not, not to get the vaccine. That's not how that's coming in. Not to mandate it because in the long run, it's needed for there being some people not having it or something like this. I don't know what I'm talking about, to be Got honest. You. Okay. Yeah, I was just curious. Here, I'm just telling that. you what I'm getting. <laughs> we explain that for the audio only audience. What I'm getting? Yeah. Well, and oh, what I see. Yes, sir. Um, well, when you ask me these questions, especially because some of it I don't, I know it sounds horrible, but I don't care about not what you're saying, but those are things that I don't necessarily, I'm not interested in. So I'm just kind of like, let me ask them. And them are my guides, spirit, my higher self, all of that. It is all of that. All of that. And it's yes. awesome. Um, well, it's interesting. And like I said, just curious about your opinion on it. And, and it doesn't even necessarily be that. It's just anything, right, that they threaten or they scare you with or something. Like, that's it. And, like, these false flags and stuff like that. It, it's all just to create fear, you know, not yes. and to, and I, which I do is, think. I do think that there um, there are people who really believe that this is necessary and um, they don't want people to be afraid. They do want it to stop. They just are trying to make it stop. And that just seems the most logical way of getting it to stop is everyone to have the vaccine. But it's not 100 percent. So um, foolproof, I guess I could say. So even if everyone did have it, we would still have to, I'm not, I don't look this stuff up. So some of this, I'm just telling you what I'm seeing. Yeah. No, no worries. No, it's, it's awesome. Uh, so, okay. I also wanted to ask you about the Schumann resonance. What is that? Mm -hmm. So the Schumann resonance, you could say is the energy that the earth gives off. It's, um, the vibration of planet earth. Um, it's not really caused by seismic activity or, you know, mantle crust. What do you call that? Where it's not about underwater volcanoes. It's, it, it is the actual frequency emanating from the iron core crystal in the center of the earth. Because as we know, the center of the earth is not lava. It is an, a geometric iron core crystal so the earth gives off its own 
frequency and um, the Schumann resonance has been measured and it usually vibrates in between 7 and 13 hertz, which is the same frequency bandwidth that our alpha brainwave state vibrates within. So that's, you know, negative ions are one portion of why you feel good out in nature, the energy of the plants and being in that environment. But a lot of it is that your body naturally tunes to Earth's natural frequency in the alpha brainwave state is a light meditative state. So it does feel very good. Um, however, it doesn't vibrate at seven to 13 Hertz consistently anymore. And we can go into that. I want to go into that. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I was asking number one for a foundation for it, but also I've been hearing a lot about it. I'm pretty damn curious and I knew exactly who to ask. So. Hit. Well, um, so the galaxy, just so everyone knows, you know, there are the, there's the Yuga cycle in the ancient Vedic, Vedic texts. There's the Mayan calendar. There's lots of ancient civilizations that we know of that you could say predicted, but more calculated when this would occur, um, this great solar flash or this increase in solar activity. And we are made of the sun's energy. We are pure light and our DNA is pure light. And as we're transitioning from carbon based matter to crystalline light, the, and which is a physiological and evolutionary process, it's not, um, reserved for just the people who type yes to affirm on Instagram. And it is a real thing that's happening. And it's because the galaxy is also revolving, not just the planets around our sun. So our solar system has entered and is entering a very highly charged particle environment of the galaxy, which I'm, I can't say this 100% for sure. Hold on. I'll just ask them. Okay, what they said was, um, I know all that sounds really weird, what no. they said. It is what it is. <laughs> well, I know, um, it's okay. Um, we've, the, our solar system has not penetrated or entered this area of the galaxy before, you could say. So this highly charged particle environment um, and I think it does have something to do with the galactic center as well. Something aligning with that is the way it looks. And this is causing our sun to erupt these coronal mass ejections is what we call them, you know, sunspots um, that are exploding. And it sends a, in a massive or um, temporary amount of light plasma into Earth's atmosphere and into Earth's bio field. You also have a bio energetic field around your body. And so as this light plasma enters Earth's frequency range or in its environment, it causes the Schumann resonance to spike. Now, there are, there's not really a strong scientific link or studied link, but I report on the Schumann resonance almost every day. And, you know, and when I say I report, I'm not in a lab measuring these things. Okay. I am getting this information from people who are in labs. Okay. Um, I'm the psychic. Okay. But I notice when there are geomagnetic storms, especially strong ones, the day after and the days following, the resonance and the amplitude increases and sometimes blacks out completely. So I am finding just logically that there seems to be a correlation. And when that happens, you're standing on Earth. So Earth's frequency is also changing your frequency. But there are many people who operate within different wavelengths. So some people are more physically focused. Some people are very emotionally uh, charged. Other people are very mentally. Some people like myself are very mental and emotional, but I can leave my body a lot. I am very, I exist in my upper chakras a lot and I'm very sensitive to energies and subtle changes in my environment. So I'm going to feel that shift in those spikes, maybe more than someone who considers themselves to be a muggle 
Okay. But I would, the whole purpose of that is as the light enters earth and it also enters our electromagnetic field because we're on earth and it is causing the light, the DNA light strand to activate and, um, upgrade basically and what comes with that is wonderful new abilities um healing lots of almost magical or sci-fi type of things that we can plan for in the future as this continues but it also comes with the dna which holds all the memory and experiences of your um in this linear perspective your ancestors and i do believe you know the dna if you go deep into it enough contains every life you've ever lived. Um, so it is a data bank, a microchip, whatever you want. To, and it is a blueprint. The DNA is responsible for you looking like this. It has the exact symmetrical form blueprint built into it. And as the DNA spins that energy, it emits a sound vibration using light because sound is just light that is in a, that has lowered itself into a lower density and then it spins into this form so there's rules to this you know that's why my hand is here and not out here and all misshapen so the dna is activated so there's a a process we're going through that's what this ascension process is all about but it also releases all these traumas and densities and things that have been experienced before so if if you're ready to get all ascended ready Get ready to go to the dark. Oh, shit. Okay. Yes. Well, so as we're going through this virgin part of the galaxy, right, um, what happens with us physiologically? Because I've heard this crystalline structure stuff going on. So what's literally happening? I mean, beyond a DNA level, you talked about... So carbon material of the body is just operating in a lower, you could say, within the third dimensional plane and as we're moving into higher states of consciousness, the body we're taking with it. Um, and this is a process that occurs over billions of years. If you really want to think about it, it's just at this time, because we are in the Vedic traditions, we're moving from an Iron Age to a Bronze Age. We're moving up in frequency. It's happening faster. So, um, and much quicker. And so there are ascension symptoms that come with that. But really, we may not be able to perceive totally of the difference. You know, I can see energy. I can see prana. I do think that that is a, a change to my optic nerve. It's not a psychic ability to see prana and auras. I don't think that's a psychic ability. I think that I am now operating a little bit higher and seeing past the narrow, very narrow visible light spectrum in which we have been perceiving. So that is one example. But basically your atoms and molecules are starting to vibrate faster okay and i do think that body temperature has a lot to do you know these changes in the average body temperature has a lot to do with these physiological changes that have been going on as well and that it may not be that we look that different just because we're transitioning just because we're transitioning to crystalline light doesn't mean that we still won't hold form and we're just going to be a bunch of balls of light flying around. That'd That's not cool the case. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, I like my hands and shit though. Yeah. I got stuff to do. I can't be a fucking ball of light. I'm too busy. <laughs> well, those balls of light, they don't need hands. They can make it happen all telepathically, but all right, I'll um, take that. We'll, we'll get there. And <laughs> in some other life, you're already doing that. And that's fair. Uh, yeah. I'm with you on that. So with with these changes, I, I have heard the idea also that there are going to be like people with superpowers. Are there going to be people that can freaking fly around and shit? Um, Is this a I real possibility, dude? Um, I I don't think in our lifetime that anyone's going to be flying around without a craft, but I do think that we will have crafts that represent us, so we would fly it without needing to touch anything because oh, okay. it would like be a cerebral telepathically yeah. or energetically connected to you using light plasma um and i think that is possible um i the superpowers though you can fly around if you um 
detach from your body or you become aware of your multidimensional self to move your consciousness into the awareness of the astral body instead of just the physical body, then you can do whatever you want. That's a way to go about it, huh? Yeah, I don't, you know, we'll still be bound to certain, I shouldn't say Newtonian, that's out the door, but physics laws. And this is not going to be um, (sighs) superheroes and all this kind of stuff. Things like that will happen and are happening in other places in the galaxy, in the universe, and parallel versions of Earth and future timelines. All that is real. And yes, it is happening. The fact that you even are thinking about a human being having superpowers is not only indicative of the fact that it is possible and that it is happening in a probable universe somewhere, um, but that you are now, through your attention to it, crystallizing it and bringing it into form. Yeah, you're welcome, Tulpa, with superpowers. I just made that shit. Good deal. Enjoy them. Period. Period. Well, um, (laughs) it's fucking awesome, man. So... You know, another thing about this was um, whenever you talk to people about this, have you had a lot more people lately come out and say, I feel like something's going on? Has yes. You, you know, okay. Elaborate. Yes. Um, especially in the past two weeks, because you have a lot of people who are into UFOs and into the Pleiadians and the Arcturians and who are into ascension and meditating, and they don't believe in astrology at all. Okay. Whatever. That's totally fine. Um But we just have to understand that the way in which consciousness in this solar system expands is through a gears of a clockwork system. And so these alignments all mean something. And it comes down to physics. Um, and, And just like earlier when you said, would we be different if we went to another star system or something like that? What would be what would we be affected by then? Well, in the astrology that I tune to, um, it's as above, so below. Um, I do believe that there are energies being emitted at us from these different stars. And so fixed stars in astrology and using the constellations is helpful and meaningful. And I definitely value it. But I believe that the archetypes of these signs and all of the individual points or degrees in each one of these signs exists within us already um, in the form of geometry and pure consciousness. So it's not necessarily about it being coming from there and coming here as much as it is being expressed through us because we're an expression The microcosm is an expression of the macrocosm. So cool. Well, what do you, um, so I have been very curious in hearing a lot about this human design thing. Did I answer your question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. You (laughs) You elaborated and told me how you felt about it. I wanted to move on to the human design stuff because it sounds incredible. Uh, When we spoke on the phone, when we were setting this up, you said that you were dabbling into it just a little bit. So tell me about it. Yes. So human design is, um, you could say the new wave of astrology, but it is the combination or the coalescing of quantum mechanics, Kabbalah, which I really resonate with, and as everyone should, because Kabbalah is basically the study of light consciousness becoming form and DNA, and the I Ching and Western astrology, not Vedic astrology. So sorry to all you Vedic (laughs) astrology people out there. Um, I, I am not discrediting it at all. I resonate with Western, and I've done, I have tried. So human design goes further. And although astrology can go to the same places that human design goes to, if you know what you're doing, um, and human design doesn't necessarily pull in as much specific information as astrology does in certain ways, but you're combining different gates and energy centers and human design is just kind of the new direction that I think we're going to go into and understanding our multidimensional selves. And do you want me to continue? I can just keep going. No, I really do. So human design was um, downloaded by this man name that he named himself Ra Uruhu, I think back in the 
early 90s or late early 90s and um he experienced this download and i think over a week's time he downloaded this similar to barbara handcloud downloading the uh, hologram that would become alchemy of nine dimensions in the pleiadian agenda and when Bash- daryl anka um, channels bashar and he's seeing holograms and stuff while the channeling's happening it's it was an energetic download that unfolded over a week or was received over a week. And from my understanding, he was somewhat traumatized by this. And I think it, um, it did something to him mentally, physically, emotionally. And so through he recovered and then he went on to teach this. And basically he was, he received that if he combined the ancient teachings of Kabbalah. And I think hermetic principles also fall into this and alchemy. Okay. Alchemical symbols, which in astrology, we use alchemical symbols for the planets and signs and all that stuff. And you combine it with the I Ching and you, and then astrology, I Ching, Kabbalah. And thus, because he received all of that at the time that super string theory and certain quantum physics that we know today were being received by scientists. See, people think that scientists just stumble upon with their big old walnut brains. They just get it. And they're just so smart. And they finally just followed all the dots into just being so intelligent. I think that they're highly attuned and they are receiving this information. Um, And many of the great scientists like Tesla, Einstein, many of them, I, I'm not going to bore you with how many will say that it was as if something struck them or came to them one day. Well, that's channeling. You pulled in that information because that information already existed in the quantum field. And we are now ready for it. So human design goes further and it, it kind of, it also reminds me of doshas in Ayurveda. Do you, are you familiar with doshas? Doshas? No. So doshas are um, like, I'm not going to go too much into detail about that, but it talks a lot about your diet and the way your body works and lifestyle and energy. Um, You know, if you're a a vata, pitta, a kapha, it's like air, fire. And I, I'm, I have a lot of air and fire in me. And like, even in the doshas, my bones cracking so much, I have a lot of air in my body and it's very true. So human design uh, breaks people up into many different categories. It takes your natal chart in astrology puts it against the I Ching and uses um, Kabbalistic teachings and traditions to give a framework and in the human design chart if you will or diagram there are not seven chakras or energy centers there are nine and that is because sometime in the 1700s we took and I'm going to go back to astrology because Right around the time that this happened, there was an alignment of Neptune and Uranus, which usually will happen, um, which can kind of awakening, spiritual awakening at a collective level. There was a Neptune-Uranus conjunction in the early 90s. I have Neptune conjunct Uranus in my natal chart. So there's an upgrade in consciousness at those times and in science and art and the way we express and receive information. So... Uh Uh-oh, where was I? You're going, dude, go for it. (laughs) So human design, it it has nine energy centers because there are, you could say, new ones. And if we really want to get to the nitty gritty, we have thousands of energy centers. Every molecule in your body could be a chakra if you wanted to see it that way. But, you know, and I do find that interesting. Um, I have now in human design, you still have the crown, the, the Ajna, the third eye and the throat. Now the, the heart, the G center, all of that stuff starts to get moved around. And um, I have direct experience with the throat the third eye and the crown i feel those like someone is touching me it is that visceral when i'm receiving upgrades or when i'm meditating those chakras will spin and tingle and vibrate and pulse and tense and i can really feel that and i still feel energy in the center of the chest so i'm still trying to decipher if the energy centers in human design really represent the 
energy centers in our body or if it's representative of a way of looking at our new evolved version of ourself. So that I'm still going to Okay, so um, what I just got was that um, in human design, there's a couple chakra shifts, you could say, or in, they call them energy centers, shifts, and they're kind of interchangeable, or there's some kind of connection, or that one of them, like maybe the heart split and became two now. So we call one the heart and we call another one the G center. I'm, that's just how it's looking. I didn't get that verbatim. But um, in human design, it talks a lot about your aura as well, your energy. And in astrology, we'll look to the rising sign to talk about how your energy comes out here. But human design takes it a step further and talks about how that energy operates and uh, manifests and works with your environment in a much more refined way. So you have uh, a grouping, you get grouped um, and you're not, it's very specific. And there are statistics that talk about how many people on the planet. I honestly don't know yet where they got these numbers. Okay. But um, it does make sense. So you have generators and that sounds like a worker bee and it kind of is but you can have a brilliant mind genius to be a generator let's be clear about this it has nothing to do with how intelligent you are it has to do with your energy field it has to do with your aura then you have manifesting generators then you have manifestors which i am and which ra uruhu was and he and i have similar natal charts um and then you have reflectors and projectors, or I should say projectors and then reflectors. Reflectors are about 1% of the population and they have all of their energy centers are open. And in the chart, it'll show you the energy center being open where it's not colored in. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. That means that that area is more open and you could probably, there's more free will that can be used there. So reflectors um, are misunderstood and they, it often seems as if they're just, well, you just must be an empath. You're just totally affected by the environment and your whole experience is based on everything out here. Well, to some degree it's correct, but you can be a manifester like me and be an empath because I have um, one of my energy centers down here connected to the there are a, it's very complicated i've seen so a then you have it yeah 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 and it's very spot on and um of course i'm getting into it because i'm pulled towards that because it's marrying everything that i love together of course i will still be using natal charts and transits and there are transits in human design i don't feel that human design replaces astrology some people might think it does but i of course don't because human design takes it is it's not using the archetypes and the stories and some people are going to resonate with that more and there are there's still information from the astrological natal chart that is not necessary it's not that it's not important in human design it's just that human design is kind of a, a bigger picture and you, you're zooming in on the natal chart when you get into astrology and you're talking a lot about very specific things in life. So I'm a manifester. There's only nine of us on the, or 9% of us, not nine of us. There's only nine. <laughs> I was like, damn. Nine manifestors on the entire Congratulations, planet. dude. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. And for instance, a manifestor's aura is repelling. So you good? Like my energy repels and that sounds bad, but it's just, it, it kind of dominates and it can, people either love my energy and are taken in by it and inspired by it and moved by it, or they are repelled by it because a manifestor's energy is, has very strong manifestational abilities, but also has to, kind of moves other people's energy out of the way. I'm going to do this. Okay. And that is 
moon sign in Leo, Venus in Leo, Mars in Leo, Jupiter in Leo, all in the first house. So of course my chart would be manifester, you know, on top of, that's not the only thing that contributes to what makes you a manifester. And then re, uh, reflectors are the 1% um, projectors. You have mental projectors. So it keeps getting more refined as people are playing with it because just like astrology, astrology is a framework that as we continue to study it, it continues to evolve. It is not just a concrete black and white thing that as we evolve, it will evolve as well and it will become more refined. You know, what would the elements of it again? It's uh, I Ching and then what else? Kabbalah, quantum mechanics, and astrology. See, it's like the Captain Planet of spirituality. It brings all of these things together to form it does, this one it does. deal. It, and it is not the end all be all. I definitely want to say that, but it is so, it pretty much covers all the bases to understand everything about you, what you need, what kind of lifestyle, what you need from other people, all of it's there. And for some people, it is much more useful because some people are big picture people and, uh, you know, a lot of people are resonating with it as am I. Yeah, it sounds awesome. It sounds like, you know, but poor bastard that came up with the I Ching, right? He comes up with this amazing thing. He's like, yeah, it's complete and that this can't be improved upon. And then somebody came along and was like, you know, if you sprinkle some cabal on that, um, <laughs> you get this really dope thing. And then they start gathering stuff where it's more powerful, like a Voltron or, you know, you got the Captain Planet reference. Well, I, yes. And I really like that Ra, he received this information. He didn't just course even if he did just stumble upon it or think hmm, maybe we should mix these together that still could have been received well he's doing better than joseph smith so that's good who's joseph smith <laughs> the mormon dude man oh my god <laughs> yes 17 yes, year old Rod. kid 17 or 14 i can't remember we can't gloss gloss over this convince people that he looked into a hat he was also known to be a charlatan as well he's like a shady character from the get they convinced people that he could look into a hat, see two stones, and he was the only one, and he did this whole thing. That's where you would have lost me, is that he was the only one. Well, he's the one that everybody believed. You can look and see, wild. yeah, well, because... No, for the Mormon faith, I'm not saying... Yes, I understand, ever. but when, yeah, when you say that you're the only one, that's your that's how oh, you know. Right gotcha. There. Yes, I missed it. Okay. Yeah, it's interesting, though, right? Hmm. Okay, uh, do you well, want to hear? Ra's definitely doing a lot better than he is. Ra has left his physical body, so he's doing better than all of us. He should rest in peace. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> don't encourage that, Chris, and stop. Okay, <laughs> check it out. I have this crazy ass conspiracy I've been wanting to tell you that I came up with the other day. You ready for it? Okay. Okay. What if all the people channeling me mediums or anything like that are being tricked? In the I already way thought about that. No, you haven't thought about this. Check this shit out. Okay. In the way that... Hang on. Now I want you to tell me yours because mine's batshit crazy. Go ahead. Tell me yours real quick and I'll keep going. Well, I think it's along the same line. Maybe not as specific, but like um, we're channeling these beings or we're receiving information and it's actually extraterrestrial beings or, or lower astral beings and they're all just tricking us into thinking that we're ascending or it's it's all just part of the illusion i have gone look i have gone places in my mind about all these things so no, you're right there mine was more to the um i guess alien uh, ai that created nanobots that can infiltrate your brain and make you literally hallucinate make everybody in the room hallucinate the same thing because they're all linked together right and then that's what leads us to these great downloads like of tesla and of other people that have claimed that they got their information and their ideas from downloads which is very interesting but they could be responsible for those downloads because we can't tell the difference right neurologically if an ai was that smart they could figure out where to go nanobot no big deal but then what they do is they give little downloads to people along the way. Hey, buddy, you know, it'd be easier is if you made a wheel out of that stone and then you could roll shit around on it. Hey, buddy, you know what you should do is make mix this with this and now you got this cool thing that benefits my, everybody. My thing is, is that if that is the case, cool. It's obviously... Well, this is it, right? But what it, what it does, though, and the inevitable conclusion of this is, is they have us create AI technology that then destroys us. So it's a full cycle deal. Since the beginning of time, bro, they're playing the long game. Got you. Um, I, I, 
the <laughs> you you just handed me a coloring book and you colored it in the lines you're the lines are right you're on the right path there it may not be nanobot maybe that's the color you filled it in with you right but you're not totally off base because we could say that source is just manipulating yeah, all of this and, you know what i mean so yeah. Now you're talking. That's exactly where I was going with this. Because then you can discern the difference between something controlling you or something influencing you. Or when you, yes. And then if you, if you get back to the basic principle of you can't be controlled by yourself. So if you are source and everything is one, then it's not control. It's just part of the one. Yeah, like the way, right? Yeah, the law of one. And it's just... It just is what it is. And, but I definitely, I feel like we are just as much God as we think this, because whenever I say source, people think of this nucleus in the center of all of this, which is full of lightning and light. And it's just sending its energy out here into the third dimension. And we're just like little measly leaves on a tree. And it's, it's, all one organism so it's all happening simultaneously and it's all one thing so what we're doing here is sending feedback to that source and that source is then sending feedback back not because it is so appreciative that we did that because that's the symbiotic nature of it that's what we do it's like a blood flow or something it goes in goes out yes yes living organism and i love that yes absolutely Um, okay, well, what is something uh, just like batshit crazy that you've heard lately? Like about what's going on or anything like that? You got any dope-ass downloads? Oh. Um, I've not heard anything crazy from people. Yeah, like, and I don't pay attention to the news and Muggles. media and stuff like that. Muggles. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, I'm, I really am being funny when I say shit like that. Um, I, I am a muggle too. Like I am, you know, I, I am still earlier this year. Um, I was doing some channeling mediumship with another medium friend of mine. And we were talking about our predictions for 2021 and I was seeing, um, a lot of new technologies, especially around automobiles and that sort of thing. And I'll have to find that video because I can't remember exactly what I said because I, you know, I wasn't totally asleep trance channeling it. But a lot of times, like even in my readings, uh, clients will ask me, remember, remember when my mom said, and I'm like, I don't remember that. And it's weird because I remember things pretty easily. And I don't remember a lot of things I say in my readings. And I used to back in the day, I was like, it must be because I'm just full of shit. It's like a built-in privacy clause. You're like, don't worry about it guys. Cause I won't remember. Yeah. Anymore. Cause I'm not going to remember <laughs> yeah, it anyway. And I think it's just, um, I'm kind of getting out of the way and going with it, not identifying with it. So I don't hold it in my memory bank which is actually out here, not in here, but I'm, I wouldn't say anything crazy. The, the craziest thing that, um, actually I will tell you something. Tell me that shit. Break it off. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to preface this. So in May of 2019, I was out on my deck meditating at night. I'm going to be short about this. I, after my meditation, I just took a deep breath and looked up in the sky and I saw something moving through the night sky. Okay. And it was the same size as the stars that I was seeing around it. And I looked to see if there were flashing lights and, um, you know, my dad has seen crafts in the sky. So it's, I do think there's something in our lineage, um, and there's some kind of connection, but I, I saw this craft and it went in a straight line. It was not in our atmosphere. It wasn't blinking. And when I called my mom to tell her what I was seeing, this huge streak of white light just appeared above me. So I still have a journal somewhere where I tried to sketch what it looked like because, because I was, I was probably about to say, you know, that 
that could have been an asteroid, which they don't move like that. It was, it had light. It was emitting light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it was, it was tiny, but it looked like the stars. It looked like a moving star. It wasn't shooting. It was moving like this straight through the sky, not like tumbling. It, it wasn't organic. It was like purposeful. Okay. And it moved through the entire span of the sky so quickly that I knew that it wasn't a plane and it had to be, it had to be out there. And then the streak of light happened and it almost looked angelic. And I just took that because I was freaking out on the phone. I had never seen anything like that. And my mom's like, what the hell are you doing? And I said, there's a, something in the sky in this streak of light. And of course, my mom, she's <laughs> at this point, she's like, everything else has come to be true. So I might as well just listen to him. Your mom. So last year. On May 25th, 29 or 2020, I was up at a cabin in North Georgia with a friend and we were in the hot tub and it, it had just become nighttime, like nine o'clock. Well, I look up in the sky and I see this same exact thing moving through the sky. And I told her, I said, do you see that? And she couldn't see it. I said, well, put your fucking glasses on. <laughs> and she puts her glasses on. She goes, I don't see it. And I said, it's right there. And as soon as I said, it's right there, it powered up and it got really bright. You got to think it was like. Uh, yeah, we that tiny. OK, so it wasn't like it was, but it was out there. It powered up and then disappeared into thin air. Awesome. She looked at me and I said we very easily could have justified that. And she was like shaking. She was like, what did I just see? What was that? And I said that I saw that same thing last year and it may not have been talking back to us. It just felt like it did because I said, it's right there. And it said, and it powered up. It was like, see me bitch. And then just left. It, it did not disappear behind some trees. It just disappeared. And it'd be one thing if it was something coming into our atmosphere and create it, it would have to be huge for me to be able to see the, the flames coming off of it, but or leaving our atmosphere. It wouldn't just disappear like that. It would fade. I did a lot of research after that. So <laughs> on May 23rd, 2021, I was outside meditating here. I look up in the sky and I was only meditating for three minutes and something told me to look up. And when I say something told me it, I just felt like I should look up and I wasn't looking for anything, but you better believe that anytime I look up in the night sky, I am looking for things. Okay. But I just was looking up because I was having a hard time meditating for a second. There it was. And it was moving through the sky in a straight line. So I, and then I asked, I said, angels, guides, whatever. I said, if this is a plane, let me know somehow. If it's not a plane, let me know somehow. As soon as I said that this plane flies, so it's going this way and this plane is going this way, obviously much lower and you can see the blinking lights, but it was so tiny. The plane was so little, but I could see the blinking lights and whether they sent it to me or not, I took that as a sign that I, I was just given something to compare this one to. Okay. The other one came with a streak of light. That one came with a power up and disappearing into thin air. This one, I got to, there was a plane intersecting its path, except they weren't in the same path because the plane was in our atmosphere. That was not. And the plane was moving just as fast as it was. Like they were both going the same speed. So if the plane was much lower and closer, then that thing up there was going much faster than the plane and in a perfect straight line. Okay. Gliding it looks just like a star. And don't think for a minute, I haven't sat in the middle of the night and gone, maybe it really was just space dust or something. I know it space wasn't. Dust. My dust from guides, space, bro. I know my guides <laughs> are so over like, they will literally, like I have been, when you asked me earlier about where I'm wanting to go, let's just, I went into Target today and something told me to go look at the men's clothes. I didn't buy anything, but I went up to this hat and I would never wear a hat like this. And I 
picked it up and the hat underneath of it said Joshua Tree, California. Uh -uh. And that's where I'm wanting to go. (laughs) And I still left there and I was like, did you all do that? And it's just like, you didn't buy the hat. No, I know. I didn't, it wasn't about that. It was the fact that it was telling me, yes, yes. And I've gotten signs way more obvious than that. And synchronicities way more obvious and in your face. And I'll still go, did I make that up? Did I, so sometimes they have to make sure that I can't do that. And so not only is that peculiar, but isn't it strange that all three times I saw it in late May. Yeah. 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 It's like a three years in a now. row now. And, and only for you Were they was it, did anybody else report it? And nobody, and so I have no idea chick you were with. Saw no it so you saw it three times. Well, I saw it three times and I was with somebody the second time. Thank God. So that somebody could substantiate it. If I ever started to convince myself that I was crazy, which I can do. Yeah. But Yeah. So that I do know that I am connected to other beings. I've had dreams. I've had all that kind of stuff. Um, I've got this little weird thing under my tongue. I'm not going to go into that, but I'm just saying there are things that lead me to that conclusion and I am open and willing and ready for them. And um, whoever these beings are. And I, I do think that I will be either channeling or connecting to them more fully on my path in my life. And it's always been leading to that. And I think this is just their beginning stages of, and there may be more of me out there that have these connections. And maybe all of us were looking up at the same time when that was happening, or maybe only I could see it and she could see it because she was in my energy field. So she assumed my perspective. That's a theory I've had as well. So, and I'm not saying they chose only me. I'm saying, they might be everywhere and only presenting themselves. And because they can do that, there are just like apparitions or lower astral energies or ghosts. I don't like calling them that. They can project their image to you and you only. You're the one creating the image of it. It's your reality you're creating. So they alter just like, I'll never forget. Um, I can't remember what it was, but I've, been into mediumship for years and years and years. And spirit will oftentimes move keys around and, and, and will you'll go looking for something and you can't find it and then you come back. Well, I always wondered, how do they do that? Are they actually densifying so much that they're picking up the keys and moving it somewhere? And where is it in the time being? Is it just floating somewhere? I didn't understand that. No, what they're doing is they're actually warping your perception so that It happens all the time where you go looking for something and it's in plain sight, but you can't see it. Well, because we're creating all of this, that's all they do is they just kind of crop it out and remove it. Although it's still physically there, you're not seeing it and they're just doing it to catch your attention and mess with you. Have you heard of those people who can hypnotize people to see through other people? When you say see through other people. Dude, fucking check this shit (laughs) out. Check this shit out. Okay, so there's this hypnotist, very famous dude. I can't remember his name right now. I'll I'll send it to you later. This Please. dude had volunteers, right, come up. And um, they were all sitting there or whatever. And this uh, daughter and uh, father combo went up or whatever. Uh, and so he had a watch with something written on the back of it, okay? And what he did was is that he took that watch and put it on the daughter's back, had the dude hypnotized, and told him that his daughter wasn't there, that she was invisible. Motherfucker read the time on the watch. Okay, now now that you say it like that, of course, of course. How can you yes. just delete what? somebody from your perception like that? Um, it wasn't deleting. It was um, just like, okay, let's go to MySpace. Um, you know, if I didn't like something in my profile, I went to the code and I removed that part of the code. Just like when you said earlier in our conversation, when we travel to these other galaxies, a lot of these beings are not traveling here. They are re-coordinating their vibrational coordinates in the time space continuum so that when they type in point B, they must exist in point B immediately and assume that position so it it doesn't need to take time and space to get somewhere because all of this is a hologram so like the pleiadian star system is right here like it's right here all of this just like 
you're like, whoa, there's a whole world in there. And I'm like, yeah, it's just a microchip. Mm -hmm. Same yeah, and thing. It's, and it, it is crazy, though, because if you think about it, nothing's rendered or nothing needs to exist outside of your perception, right? And this can be on a micro level to everybody. And so nothing needs to be outside of the two rooms that we're in for us to believe that the entire world is out there. This is the kind of shit that fascinates me, man. And this is why when people say, oh, um, I'm not in Atlanta. Um, maybe when I'm in Atlanta, I'll book a reading with you. And I'm like, I, you don't need to be in person to have a reading with me. They're no better in person than they are on Zoom. They are because I'm, I'm tuning to your energy just by being aware of you. When I'm in the shower in the morning earlier, because I just had a reading before I got on here with you earlier this morning at like noon or, or uh way earlier than that, like eight o'clock in the morning, I was in the shower and I was receiving information about this person I was going to have a reading with at 7 PM. And um, I forgot about that until we were having the reading. And I was like, Oh, that's where that information was coming from. Well, that means that the reading was already happening. That's crazy. Fucking dope, dude. And there are times where I receive information um, like somebody's mother or I'll go, okay, I'm going to do a reading and somebody's mother's going to come through today. It'll be as simple as that. And then I'll meet somebody at a class or a grocery store and I'll bump into them and then it'll be for them. Cool. Well, that wasn't a planned reading that wasn't booked. That's because you could say, well, she knew you all were going to cross paths. Oh, cause she could see the future. No, because we were crossing paths already in that moment. Damn. I love this kind of shit, but they can't. And see now I have proof of it because it's happening to me. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Well, last time you just picked up the Prana super ability and now you've got that going for you. So who knows, man, maybe you'll be the one that flies next, you know, and you won't be. You that is actually out, ever man. since I was a kid. One of my, I used to, uh, not to bring the mood down, but I always had two wishes. Are you bumming Not to be on? gay. <laughs> Why would you? So, okay. Oh, okay. The, go on. In the 90s, I did not want to be gay. You just wanted to wear uh, jinkos like everybody else. Go on. I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to be a toxic straight man. Or just a straight man. You don't have to be toxic. No, I wanted to be a <laughs> Louisville, Kentucky toxic just straight a, man. Oh, okay. So, and what's the other one? To fly. Okay, that makes sense. I have dreams all of the time, all of the time, about my ability to manipulate gravitation or gravity. And all I do in these dreams is it's kind of like a bird flapping its wings, except I'm, I'm pulling my energy down to my feet and, I'm, and it's causing a spring up. And every time I go up, I stay up. It's very odd. I'm not just flying in my dreams. I'm getting up there by this like pumping motion. It's really weird. And because I'm doing something with gravity in my dreams, I've been doing that since I was a kid. And I want, I have always wanted to fly. That's been my, one of my biggest dreams would be the ability to just fly around. Um, and I used to throw pennies in fountains and blow my candles out because when I was a kid, I just, I knew that if I wished for something, I could make it real because I can't, I was You're a dumb kid or I was still spiritually connected that one. and knew that that was pop, that one. See, I was, well, <laughs> I, I was being, facetious. I was being facetious, but yes, I know, you I have know. that element as a child that then they beat out of you by society. Right. And just, you know, well, and mine was of, beaten out of me. Like literally. Okay, yes. you're bumming everybody out again. We're not going this direction, but we, we hate your plight, but we know that it it turned you into who you are today, which we're all grateful for. So I, I turned my plight into a flight. Oh, shit. Uh, you know, and maybe that was a metaphor. Maybe you were grounded because you couldn't tell everybody who you really were, and flying was your metaphor for being able to live your true self. So actually, you're doing both now. So good job. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Now we've really come full circle. Do you have Braille on your fingers tattooed? Yes. Okay. Now, what I like can can you can we talk about the irony? Of course, that's why I did it. <laughs> oh, okay, got it. I figured and as I'll, much. Do you want me to take it further? You know, y yes, yes. It says "feel good." <laughs> you can't. <laughs> you know what I find amazing is you walk up to like an elevator or something like that, and they've got the braille printed on there. I'm like the fuck are you guys doing? Like, what are we doing here? It's insane. 
Um, well, shit, man. Um, you know, let's let's pop it here. I mean, did you have anything else you want to talk about? I could talk to you forever, but I'm gonna let you get to your evening because you're going out of town. I'm good. All Thank right. you. Dope. Um, well, cool. Well, um, so yeah, tell tell everybody where they can find you. I'll link this in the show notes anyway. So, um, of course, you can uh, book a reading with me. Um, I also do parties. I'll be doing a psychic party when I'm out of town. Um, live mediumship event. All of that and all my information you can find at Christopher with a Y medium dot com. Also, if you're not already following me on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter at the T H E dot Astro medium, you absolutely should. I'm also on Facebook as well. I'm also the in-house intuitive astrologer for eclipse over Roswell here in Atlanta, Georgia. And I teach astrology class every Wednesday night. I also do empaths anonymous every Sunday night. And in July, we are starting uh, astrology 101 and astrology 102. And I will also be teaching eventually psychic astrology or, or astrological mediumship. And then um, plenty of classes to come. There's introduction to plant medicine. Um, I'll be doing Chronicles of Chiron classes. So talking about different healing modalities. So stay tuned for that. Awesome. So cool. And yes, I'll be linking all of this stuff in the show notes, guys. You know how it works. Well, like I said, man, thanks again for coming on. I always enjoy your company and your time. Uh, like I said, uh, last episode, we had uh, got a lot of great feedback from. So thanks again, awesome. man. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Much love, brother. Be safe out of town. We'll talk to you soon. You too. Always wonderful getting to talk to my good friend, Christopher, the Astro Medium. Y'all definitely check the show notes on how to contact him. Get your reading. He has done some incredible stuff for me off air. That was for me. And uh, so I'm not going to share it here, but it was incredible. And uh, so I highly can personally recommend what he does. So uh, as for this show, guys, you can find us at expandingrealitypodcast.com. That is where the links to all of the socials will be. Uh, Go check out the TikTok. It's a lot of fun. It's linked up there at the website now. Um, Also, Patreon. Thank you all so much for your contributions on Patreon. To check out this video, go to YouTube, which you can link directly from expandingrealitypodcast.com. The link's there to go do that. And you can check Christopher out. And um, there's a whole video element to this so i hope you guys are taking advantage of that as well so i uh, go out into the world this week guys and listen to Vinny the saint this music that's playing underneath you guys go check out the uh, link in the show notes there and go find him out while you're doing that pick up a piece of litter get out of the left hand lane please this is a public service announcement here get out of the left hand lane it's a pain in the ass i buy somebody behind you in line a coffee or a meal you will be incredibly amazed at how that changes your day in particular not only the person that you did that for and think about that they then go out and create an incredible reality around them based on your kind gesture hashtag responsible for saving humanity nice job everybody everybody nice job i also guys Uh, Go out into the world this week, and y'all just be good to one another. Thank y'all so much for listening. We'll see you next time.